can't exactly look right now, kid. Up there! Freaking weird! You gonna tell me or holy? You're slowing down? Yeah. We're in for a show, kid. Right away, when we first started talking about doing direct-to-video movies based more, um, more coherently on the comics, um, Dark Knight was always at the top of my wish list, and it just took us a while to get around to it, and here we are. Why is the timing right now? Why did, did you feel like you had to get a certain amount of other films under your belt no, first, or it, it, it really had more to do with? Um, no, I would have done it right away. <laughs> uh, I, had, I had no hesitation. No, it was more. Um, uh, concerns on DC's part uh, to really coordinate it with the, with the Christopher Nolan movies. Mm. Um, there was some uh, speculation at a certain point after the after uh, Dark Knight and before Dark Knight Rises was in production. They didn't know which way he was gonna, Christopher was going to go with the movie, and there were some concerns that he was going to might might be kind of you know using some of the Frank Miller material, um, which he ended up doing, but putting his own spin on it. Right. But um, once that got further along, DC you know felt comfortable you know letting us you know do a more you know. Strictly faithful adaptation of the comic. Well, I've never read it. I know Frank Miller well. I mean, he did Robocop too, so we're gold buddies. So I knew of it, but uh, but I didn't know when I got the, the info to do this. Uh, the, 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 I wasn't hip to it. I, I knew he'd written it, but I, I hadn't read it. Did you go back and look at the I source look at material? Man. I, had, I had to look at everything. It's like, it's it's you know overwhelming and mind-boggling how much has been done on Batman. And why not? You know, he's an icon. He's an icon not just sort of because he's a superhero, because he's an icon because of his humanity, you know, of his loss, of his need, and his sort of uh, vacuity. This is an older Batman. He has had a lot of experience. He's kind of bitter and angry and shut down, and I knew Peter could have that. And so we worked out the schedule, which was the biggest challenge was the schedule, and got it. We recorded on Saturdays, Sundays, whatever we could get him, and, and I'm so glad we took, made the extra effort because I think he's an awesome Batman. He sounds like the character. We were all throwing out ideas about you know casting, and we kept throwing out different ideas, and we were like, oh, he's not right, or no, he's too old, or he's too young, or he's too this, or whatever. And um, one of the things that Jay and I talked about early on was like trying to keep the movie still kind of set. We didn't we didn't bother updating any of the story material. And we were talking about, oh, you know, in the 80s, you know, yeah, if we're going to keep that kind of 80s vibe, and not only that, but enough time has passed since the 80s now that if there was like a big action star from the mid-80s who would be the right age now to be Bruce Wayne, and I think Jay is the one who said... Peter Weller, and I went, oh, duh, yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> You've played so many iconic roles in your career, Buck, Bookeroo, Bonsai, and Robocop. Was Batman uh, uh, something you wanted to cross off your list? You know, the thing is that it was different playing Batman. It was great playing Batman at a particular time, it's like nobody else played it. But the other roles, I created, I created them. Right. And I didn't create Batman. But it was great jumping in at a new point in Batman's life. And that was the thrill. How is this Jim Gordon maybe different than other Jim Gordons we've seen. He has a different relationship with Bruce slash Batman in this one, doesn't he? Well, they're looking back at their lives. So, you know, and I can, I, I can appreciate that. Uh, they're both a little weary, but uh, they still can't resist. You know, uh, you know I, I, I think it's like Batman or Miller's Batman. He can't resist getting out, back out there. It's a wonderful scene between Batman and uh, between Bruce Wayne and uh, Jim Gordon. I love that scene. Um, Can you give us a little hint of what happens that scene? Well, they just talk. They have okay. a talk like two guys that have been through some of them. And they're just having a drink, reflecting on some of the things until Batman says, I won't tell you, but Gordon brings up a name from the past. And Matt Bruce says, I think I'm, I think we better call it a night. We know that there are people out there who've practically memorized the book. <laughs> you know, they're going to be able to watch it and go, wait a minute, why'd they change that one line of dialogue? Um, but other than that, you know, uh, we're fans of the comic ourselves, and hopefully the things that we like about the comic are the same things that, that, that most of the fans like about the comic. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll at least realize that we did our best to try to honor the comic. So, um, you know, other than that, we just kind of do, do what, we, what we can and do the best job we can.
Everybody freeze! Mister, you just crippled that man! He's young, he'll walk again. But you'll stay scared, won't you, punk? I mean it! Get away from him! He's being patient with you as it is, kid. Nice to have you back, Pats.